Hey guys, welcome back to Woodshop Junkies. Today I'm going to try and continue making the most of my small shop by adding a storage unit for things like spray paint cans and other wood treatments and chemicals. I have cans and bottles standing all over my shop and if I really want to get the most of my space, organization is key. So I want to add a unit to my French cleat wall to organize and store these items. A simple shelf isn't really an option for me because considering my small space I'm likely going to end up bumping into it resulting in the cans or whatever is on top of it dropping onto the floor. A tray would solve this problem but it's not ideal either because it requires space above it to add and remove items. And space is very precious to my operation so I figured I would make a box type enclosure but instead of having cabinet doors that require space to open and close I would add the items on a tray that could tilt slightly forward to add and remove them. This would have the added functionality of being able to remove from the wall and be used on the go for when I'm working around the house or on site. So as always I'm going to get started by sizing up my components. Now I'm building this project out of MDF which is a little out of the ordinary for my normal shop builds but I'm actually planning a project that requires MDF and because I don't have a lot of experience working with it I figured this was a great opportunity to test some of my ideas. The cabinet is going to consist out of two main parts, the housing and the tray. The tray will fold out of the housing giving me access to whatever is inside. Now the housing is fairly straightforward so I'm going to assemble it first. And that's pretty much the housing. I still need to add the sides however, but before I can do that, I need to add holes into which I'm going to insert a pipe. This pipe is going to allow the tray to rotate so I can open and close it. And that's the housing assembled with the sides and the holes drilled for the pipe that's going to allow the tray to open and close. 
I also added these angled cuts at the back here, but I'm going to be explaining a bit more about that later on in the video. But with all of that done, I can jump on getting the tray assembled. Right, so for the tray, I'm going to get started with the lid, which is going to form the front of the enclosure or the box. You're going to pull it open like this to get access and close it like that. Now, because it's going to be an enclosure, I'm not going to be able to see what's inside. So to overcome this, I'm going to make cutouts in the lid and install Perspex or plexiglass into those cutouts. To make my cutouts, I first rolled holes on the corners of where each cutout is going to be. Then, like I did in the past with my bench top, I'm going to use my jigsaw to remove the larger segment of each cutout by cutting slightly towards the inside of the guidelines. Then, using a flush trim bit on my router, I can trim the edges for a nice clean cut. Right, so that's all the holes cut with the jigsaw and now I'm simply going to clamp a piece onto the guidelines I drew earlier and then using the flush trim bit or the trim bit on the router just clean up the edges. So that's all the cutouts made and I also added the chamfer around the outside edge just to tidy it up a bit. Next step is to cut the step or the recess at the back into which I'm going to be installing the perspex. To do this I'm going to use the step cutter bit with my router. That's all the cutouts made for the perspex and one last piece of preparation I need to do on the door is to cut in a handle that would allow me to grab it when I open and close it. After that I can start finishing up the assembly.
Okay, that's all the cutouts and inserts made, but I'm not going to install them into their places just yet because I still want to paint the entire assembly. So for now, I'm going to finish up assembling the tray, paint everything, and hopefully I can start finishing up the project. So that's most of the housing assembled. I am still going to add a backing over here, but I'm going to do that after I've installed the inserts. Then also, as you can see, I misdrilled over here, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem because I'm going to be closing all the screws with wood filler before I paint. Then this board I attached at the bottom here might seem a bit out of place, but it will make more sense when the entire unit is assembled. So that's everything prepped and sanded and now I can give it a coat of paint before doing the final assembly. Okay guys, so at the moment I find myself in a bit of a situation. I wanted to make the housing grey and the tray white but unfortunately I have run out of white paint. And considering the fact that the country is on lockdown, there's no way I'm going to be able to get more. So I'm going to have to paint this another color and the only other color I have is blue. So I'm going to have to paint it blue and hope for the best.
So earlier I mentioned these angled cuts at the bottom here and the reason for them is so that the unit can open like this when it is not mounted to the wall. While the plate I added at the bottom here or the plank I added at the bottom is acting as a stopper preventing the door from opening further than this. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it. At this stage you're probably wondering why I use the complicated pipe system instead of a set of hinges. Well, the reason for this is if I fit hinges or used hinges instead of the pipe, it would still open like this. But when I take it off the wall and I place it somewhere else, this option is not going to work because all this weight is going to pull the unit over. So with the pipe this part opens to the other side and the weight of the cans and this area here still keeps the unit upright. And that's pretty much it for this video. Not entirely what I wanted with the blue paint but you know it is what it is. The two cans of white paint inside of the unit are empty. They are, they're pretty much just for display purposes. And because the country is on lockdown, I find myself with a lot of time on my hands. So I'll probably be back in just a few days with a new video. Then, I don't think there's a person in the world not somehow affected by this virus. So to everybody watching, please stay safe. As I said, I'll be back real soon with a new video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Cheers.